Hello, my name is Doug Davison from SmiteWorks, and we're going to show part two of the uh, lighting effects within Fantasy Grounds Unity. We can do delve into a little bit more details about how you can manipulate the lights. So I've got a map that I finished up in the previous video about how to add lights to a map, and it has a little outdoor section and an indoor section with some torches, and there happens to be a player who is uh, busy exploring the map. So let's move this player here all the way down and out. They'll be, they will be our test case uh, and they had a torch on. So I'm gonna go ahead and re remove the torch. All right, so um, if I unclick them, then as a GM, I will see the entire map and it will have stuff grayed out, you know, except for where the players revealed it, then it will brighten up as your players move about the map, you would see kind of where they're exploring. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, first off, you can change the ambient lighting, which is on the outside. I got it set to dawn now, and you'll see shadows kind of shift off in this direction. And if I switch over here, I can select uh, from one of the other presets. Sunlight is pretty much a straight over the head, overhead uh, 12 o'clock kind of sun. And then I've got dusk, which shifts the shadows kind of in the opposite direction. And then I have... Uh, moonlight, which is kind of, you know, just like a little bit of a bluish uh, kind of haze over top of everything. And if they were to add a torch on top of that, let's take this character here and let's add a torch back. Uh, add a torch. You'll see that the torch brightens up the moonlight area here. So I can go back to play mode and as they move around, they have a torch that they can see. All right, so that's um, you know some of the ambient lighting effects. Some of the other things you can do here, let's turn off the torch. Some of the other things you can do with the ambient lighting is you can adjust it even further. If you don't like the presets, let's go back to, let's say, dawn. Let's say that you wanted to indicate that you know maybe they've rested for a while and the shadows are, um, you know, changing, they're growing the direction of it. The sun is moving in the sky and maybe the, they're lengthening or, or shorting, shortening. So maybe it's getting a little bit uh, closer to noon, for instance, and the sun has moved and shifted and uh, zip, zipped over. So now you can kind of change that. You can even change the color of the shadows if you'd like uh, and go that route. All right, so um, that's how you can do ambient lights. Let's jump inside to the interior here. Let's go back to lighting here, and I'm going to unselect my token so I can kind of see clearly what's going on. And so I've got a bunch of tokens here. I've got a bunch of light defined in each of these sections. They are all currently torches, and you can just click on each one to select and edit that specific light. So here, if I want to grab this one, I can make it a candle. For instance, and you'll see that it burns a lot dimmer. I want to select all of them. I can select all of them. I can make them all a candle, for instance, and you'll see that uh, it's a lot smaller. The any of these individual lights, while you have them selected, will have kind of what their various ranges are. And if I again I select all of them, I can then say, okay, I don't want it to be bright five and dim. Maybe they're a little bit stronger than a candle. Let's make it bright ten. And let's go out to say 20 feet. And as I do that, you'll see they each kind of expand out. But it has the flicker effect, which you can dial down. You can also switch it to a pulse. Uh, it could be useful for some magical effects. You can layer these on top as well. And then I got a flashing effect, which is just an on-off. So you can use that for like more modern type things, where maybe an alarm is going off or something, um, to to great effect. I'm gonna put it back to flicker for now. You can also change it to have a different color. So if they have a green light or maybe they've gone to the uh, purple light district, then there we go, all set. You can also paste in here. This is an uh, ARGB value, so it has RGB. You can paste in RGB as well, uh, but you can also just kind of dial up individual ones. So if you want like pure green, you could just use these sliders to change each of those things, or if you want yellow, whatever you want, basically. Uh, and if you have some favorite color that you like on the web, you could just copy and paste it in there. 
and it will accept uh, either a uh, straight RGB or an A uh, RGB. The alpha channel is the overall opacity. So as I dial that down, it's a little bit uh, more transparent, basically, as it gets closer to zero here. Okay. Or again, if you want to just go back to a preset, you can just select a preset. All right, now we have, let me go ahead and get rid of all of these lights. I'll just get rid of some of these lights. Let's get rid of, say those two. Let's say the lights have blown out and your player is moving in here. Uh, let's say they're standing in the middle of this area. From here, the player, you could go into lighting and you can add a token light. So token light here has presets as well. So the player can then carry around a candle and now you can hit add light now the player is carrying a candle so now if I'm back in play mode as that player moves about they have their candle that goes with them if you want to change that light you can just go back to here uh, go back to token light make sure you have your token selected and I can change it from a candle to a torch or to a lantern or I can go back to a candle and I can say okay well maybe it's a magical sword that's glowing I can say it has kind of a cool blue light that it has, and it has a 10 foot bright radius, 15 foot dim radius. And then you can change the amount of fall off if you want it to fall off more or less. It just kind of changes how much of, uh, of a drastic change it is from, from kind of one to the next. Okay. So that's kind of the lighting. You can have multiple lights, just keep adding them here and you'll see that this number goes from one to one and, and keeps going up. So let's say I have a, maybe I've got a five foot blue light and then beyond that, uh, I also have another one which is going to be a torch. Then you'll see now I have two effects kind of going and the light will kind of wash out a bit so you will see that uh, it's a little bit bluish in the middle here, but it actually has the combination of the torch plus that that's working in, in combination. If I go back to my token light here, you'll see that I now have two. So I can delete and remove those. Now, potentially an easier way that you can manage this is, is by using the effect system. So you can get to the effect system here, and you'll see I've got a couple examples here, and I've got some dummy ones that we were using that we need to get rid of that were bad. So I've got light and I've got torch and candle and you could add lantern there for for instance the syntax is going to be light colon with all caps and then the range and then one of the preset values uh, there are also other values you can play around with if you want to put in um, the RGB values for instance we'll post all of this on the wiki later so you can refer back to it now if I take this effect all of the players can also control this themselves they can simply drag a candle to their sheet and now you'll see that they have a candle. Now the nice thing about that is that as Mary moves from map to map, basically as soon as you drag her onto the map, let's delete the token here, it will know that Mary likes to carry a candle with her to see where she's going. So it's all set. And then if you're on a map that doesn't need lighting, you could just turn it off by toggling it there but leave the effect on. Or you can take the effect off, whichever one you prefer. So I'll go ahead and turn that back on. Uh, actually, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to show you some other options we have. So for instance, I have Aragorn and Lego Lass here. So they happen to have uh, this one, the human, even though it looks like a, f uh, looks, like a looks like a dwarf, but it's a human. Uh, and then here we have Lego Lass, which is a wood elf and the wood elf has dark vision. So let me show you what the wood elf looks like. If I drag a Legolas hat here and then select Legolas, you'll see everything is gray. That's because Legolas has uh, dark vision. So let me switch back here. So now as I move around, Legolas has dark vision. Now you'll see once Legolas moves outside, they can see full color. But in darkened areas, they only see grayscale. So wherever there is light, they will be able to see light wherever there's not light they won't so here if I turn a torch on for Mary again or a candle then you'll see as Legolas moves around they can see the torch light there but everything is in grayscale this is automatically picked up from the senses 
for D&D &D 8 Pathfinder uh, 1, 2, D&D uh, 3, 5, and 4th edition. So uh, that should work pretty well. And then you just basically modify this section here, your senses, before you add them into the combat tracker or onto the map. Uh, also, if you have a rat or an, an NPC of any kind, they have dark vision, then that will get picked up automatically. So if I were to take um, one of these rats and drop the rat into the map, you'll see that the rat also can see where it's going, even when the torch is off. And most of the monster, a lot of the monsters will have dark vision, so they'll be able to see very quickly. And then I just unclick it as a GM and I can see kind of everything. If I want to see exactly what the player sees, I can turn on Enable Disable Player Vision. So this is what the player sees. So they only see the part that they have line of sight and vision for. And then as they move out of an area, you can see they can still kind of see. It's really dark. We're going to probably play around with this one. But they can kind of make out a little bit of where they've already gone. That's kind of the fog of war. But then as they get back into here, they can see everything again. Cool. All right. Uh, vision, you can also modify from here. Although I do highly recommend. See, it says that Legolas has dark vision, one of one. Mary Death has no other custom visions. Um, you can also put the blinded effect on, let's say, Mary here has blinded. So I put blinded on him. And now Mary should not be able to see anything. Oh, did I put it on? Oh, blinded. There we go. Now Mary can't see anything because she's been blinded. Once the blinded effect is gone, Mary can see again. All right. And that's basically uh, the long and short of vision and lighting within Fantasy Grounds Unity. And, uh, you know, we'll keep looking at, at adding new features kind of over time, but this should get you up and going. Um, you can do darkness as well if you want to add a darkness section. Let's say, um, yeah, let's add that real quick. So let's add a new light, but we're going to call it uh, darkness. And so if I put darkness here, do I want a 30 foot? Maybe just 30. Maybe someone cast a globe of darkness right here. Boom. There it is. Um, can't see anything. It blocks out all the light. Even Legolas here says, oh. I can't see anything in that area. Perhaps there's uh, some dark elves or some drow in the area. Thanks for watching and uh, let us know what you think on our forums and Facebook. Take care.